Hello friends, welcome to Dentistry Update, Journal Discussions. In recent years full mouth implant rehabilitations has been done in numerous patients. Monolithic prosthesis has been advocated to prevent aesthetic fractures of veneering materials and they are milled from a block or disc without a dental cast. Fit is defined as the degree of adaptation between two parts. Passive fit between two components is accomplished with zero tension of the retaining screws. Perfect passive fit is not possible to obtain as there is discrepancy of 30-50 microns is always present which is considered as clinically acceptable. When there is lack of passive fit it might result in mechanical or biological complications. Mechanical complications like screw loosening, screw fracture, fracture of monolithic prosthesis or biological complications like mucositis or peri-implantitis might occur. The methods to check the passive fit of the prosthesis includes visual examination by means of one screw test or Sheffield test, tactile perception of the abutment prosthesis junction by means of a probe, intraoral radiographs and use of torque controlled using torque time graph. The updated protocol for accessing the passive fit of multiple implant supported prosthesis was given by Oscar E.T. All with is published in JPD which describes an updated clinical protocol to assess passive fit through the systematic use of tactile feel while tightening the retaining screws, visual or radiographic evaluation when performing the one screw or Sheffield fit test, and the assessment of the torque slash time graph obtained during the placement of the implant or abutment retaining screws with a torque controlled surgical motor. The technique is as follows verification of the prosthetic framework, or finished prosthesis is done with tactile feel while tightening the screws. The screws are tightened alternatively from side to side after this the all the screws except one is loosened three complete turns. Then a torque controlled surgical motor is used at 15 newton centimeters torque and 15 revolutions per minute. Time slash torque graph is recorded using the software. Sheffield fit test is performed by visual assessment with or without magnification at the opposite side of the only placed retaining screw. If the fit is subgingival then radiographic evaluation is done using parallel positioner or palpating with a dental explorer. Tighten the retaining screw of the most mesial implant on the opposite side, the closest to the midline, with a torque controlled surgical motor, recording the torque slash time graph. Then, Tighten the retaining screw of the most distal implant, and, finally, tighten the remaining ones. Record the torque slash time graph with the software program during each screw placement. Clinical characterization of passive fit of the prosthesis is accessed by various methods as mentioned previously. The fit of the prosthesis or framework or verification jig can be accessed by tactile sensation while tightening the prosthesis or framework or verification jig. All the screw components should be cleaned nicely before testing the fit of the prosthesis. Care should be taken not to squeeze the gingiva, press the ridge under the pontic or evaluate with tight proximal contacts. If resistance is felt during screw tightening, the prosthetic axis might not have coincided with the implant or the abutment, the tension of the retaining screw. Nevertheless, the feel is subjective and dependent on the operator's experience. The use of a torque-controlled surgical motor should help make the assessment more objective. Using a torque-controlled surgical handpiece would be better to determine the passivity of the screws. A long alignment zone indicates a lack of passive fit so that tension is needed to align the prosthetic framework and the implant or abutment. After the alignment zone, the elastic clamping zone occurs. More rigid materials, such as metal or zirconium frameworks, will lead to a steeper slope than softer ones, such as verification test resin. A short alignment zone and a high slope elastic clamping zone, representing an optimal passive fit. A more extended alignment zone that ends in an elastic clamping zone, indicating a lack of passive fit, which probably could be considered clinically acceptable. The torque threshold to determine a fit as clinically acceptable has not been determined, and investigation is required. An extended alignment zone and no elastic clamping zone, indicating a lack of passive fit. With the described protocol, 
a clinically acceptable fit can be determined after systematically performing the visual or radiographic evaluation when performing the one screw or Sheffield fit test and the subjective and objective evaluation of the felt resistance during the retention screw tightening. This article describes an updated clinical protocol to assess passive fit through the systematic use of tactile feel while tightening the retaining screws, visual or radiographic evaluation when performing the one screw or Sheffield fit test, and the assessment of the torque slash time graph obtained during the placement of the implant or abutment retaining screws with a torque controlled surgical motor.